Hello and welcome to Skills and Automation. My name is Ash and today we're going to jumpstart ourselves into the world of Excel VBA with this power packed short course. VBA is a great way to automate repetitive tasks. The golden rule I follow when building VBA projects is that if a set of manual tasks can be performed logically in Excel, then it can most definitely be automated through VBA. Today, we're going to automate a common and useful task. That is, copy data from an external file and paste it into a current file. VBA is a logical and structured language. So there are some basics we need to cover before we begin coding. But before we start, I just want to mention that if you like this tutorial, I also have a two and a half hour practical course on YouTube where we build an end to end real world reporting project from scratch. It's for complete beginners and it's designed to teach you VBA through building actual real life code rather than just spending hours learning only theory. Okay, back to our current video. This is our source data file. It has a monthly sales figures. We will copy and paste this data into the data sheet in our template file. Let's create the template file. Open a blank Excel workbook. Rename sheet one to console. In cell B3, we will paste the folder name where the source file is saved. Control C, Control V. And in cell B4, let's paste the file name. Control V. Let's create a new sheet. Call it data. And let's save our file. File save we will call it monthly analysis if you want to run a macro from this file we'll need to save it as a dot xlsm click save we will write our code in the back end of excel called vp editor to access it click alt f11 i'll just walk through how my coding environment is set up for this video let's start from top to down top here we have the menu you should have this by default below it is the standard toolbar which has a variety of shortcuts if you can't see it go to view Toolbars, click Standard. Below it is the Project Explorer, which shows us the worksheets within this file. We can also access our modules where we will write and store our code. If you can't see it, go to View and click Project Explorer. Let's write our first basic macro. For that, we need to create a module. Come to the Project Explorer, right click, Insert, Module. This area here is a coding window. We will write our macro inside a sub procedure, which is like a container of code. So let's go sub, give the macro a name, no spaces, enter. All our VBA code will need to be written within the sub and the end sub line. For our first macro, we will display a message in Excel using the message box command. And the message can say hello world, which is a text string, which needs to be written inside double quotes. To run the macro, make sure that the cursor is anywhere between these sub lines. Come to the standard toolbar, hit the run button, and there we have our message. Click OK. And that was our first macro. Excel follows a hierarchy and each element within that hierarchy is called an object. The most common hierarchy used in Excel VBA is shown on the screen, where the Excel application or Excel can have one or multiple files called workbooks. Each file can contain one or many worksheets and each sheet can contain a range which refers to a cell or a group of cells. And there are a whole lot of other objects as well. But this is what we will focus on. To refer to a cell or worksheet, we need to follow this hierarchy. Application need not be mentioned, hence we'll ignore it. Let's see how to refer to cell B3 in the worksheet console. This is the full formal way of referring to a cell. But in my head, I would read this as, out of all the files or workbooks within Excel, I want to refer to the monthly analysis file. And out of all the sheets in the monthly analysis file, I'm referring to the worksheet console. And out of all the cells in the worksheet console, I want to refer to cell B3. And when referring to the current workbook, we can substitute the workbook's part with just this workbook. But the question now is, what can you do with an object? Let's consider the cell B3, which is a range object. Its value is a text string and the background color is yellow. These are all its characteristics, which are called properties of the object. Let's write a macro to display the value in cell B3. We will follow the full hierarchy which is workbook, sheets, and the range. And we'll specify the property at the end. The property that we are after is value. So dot and value. And to display this, we will type our message box command. Keep the cursor in this macro, hit run, and our folder path is displayed. Click OK. But we can also do something with this object. We can copy its value or clear its contents. Both of these are methods. To put a definition to it, method is some action that we want to perform with the object. Let's write a macro to 
to clear the contents in columns A and B. To refer to the columns, we need to follow the object hierarchy. First, we refer to the sheet dot. We will choose the columns object and we want to clear a continuous set of columns from column A to B. So we need to mention the first column and the ending column dot and we'll choose the method clear contents. We'll give this a macro a different name. Okay, press the run button, come to our console worksheet and all the contents have been cleared. A variable allows us to store the value of an object or the object itself for use later. Variables are generally used to read code better or to shorten the code. I would classify variables into two types. Variable to store a value and variable to store an object. A value variable can be the value inside a cell or the number of rows in a range. To use a value variable, declare it using a dim statement, give it a name, specify a meaningful data type and assign it a value. We are storing a folder path in cell B3. Let's assign a variable to refer to it. Declare it using dim, give the variable a meaningful name and since it's a text value, the data type will be a string. Now let's assign the value in cell B3 to this variable. So how do we get the value in cell B3? We just need to use the object hierarchy to refer to the cell and grab its value property. Now let's display the value. Instead of using the entire object hierarchy as we did up here, we can now directly refer to the value variable. Let's run the sub procedure and we get a message box. We can also assign a variable to an object such as a workbook, worksheet or range. To use an object variable, we'll follow the same steps. Except when assigning an object to the variable, we will need to use the set statement. Let's assign a variable to hold our console worksheet object. We will declare it using dim, give it a meaningful name, data type will be the worksheet object and we'll assign the console worksheet to this variable using the set statement. And now we can use this variable directly. Let's select cell A1 in the console worksheet and run this macro. Come to the console worksheet and our cursor is on cell A1. Before we begin our macro build, let's get some perspective. If we were to do this manually in Excel, what steps would we follow? What I normally would do is take a notepad and scribble down all the steps. So step one, we'll come to our data sheet and clear any data from columns A to column E. Step two, we'll open the source file. Step three, we will select the data range, control A. Step four, we will copy the data, control C. Step five, we will come back to our monthly analysis file. Step six, select cell A1 in the data sheet. Step seven, control V and paste the data. Step eight, auto fit the columns. And step nine, we will close the source file. That's it. There are nine steps and we can do the exact same thing in VBA and in the exact same sequence. Let's begin building our macro. Create a new module in the project explorer, right click, insert module. We will create a new sub. Let's do some initial setup first. We will call this step zero. Notice this apostrophe mark. This is called a comment. The entire line turns green. VBA will ignore this line of code and jump to the next line. Comments are usually used to put notes against our code. So we will create some object and value variables to use in the code later on. First, declare and assign object variables for the worksheets we will be using. We will be using the console worksheet and the data worksheet. Next, we'll declare and assign value variables for the values in cell B3 and B4. We've already done this before. Cell B4 has the file name and we've given the variable a name called import file. To open the source file, we need the full file path. That is the main folder joined to the file name. Let's create a value variable to hold the full file path. Okay, so how would we do this in Excel? As a beginner VBA developer, always ask yourself that. Let's go to Excel. We want to concatenate cell B3 to B4. Let's put in the formula for that equals to cell B3. Actually, we can't join the two directly. We need to separate them with a backslash. So to join cell B3 to the backslash, we need to use the ampersand symbol. Backslash is a string, so put it inside double quotes. And ampersand again to join it to cell B4. And that's it. This is a full file path. Let's copy this formula. Let's assign the full file path value to this variable. So it's basically the formula from Excel. Now we can tweak this. What is B3? B3 is basically the value in cell B3 
which is represented by main folder variable. Control C, Control V, and B4 is the import file variable. And that's it. That will give us the full file path. So in step one, we want to clear the contents in the columns A to E. We have already seen how to do this in the theory section. We'll refer to our worksheet data and bring up the columns object. We need to refer to the continuous columns from column A to E. And what do we want to do? We want to clear the contents. Next, let's open the source file. To open a file, we'll use the open method of the workbooks object. So workbooks dot use the open method. Now this method will take a parameter. That is, we need to tell it which file we want to open. We will need to give it the full file path, which is this one. Hey, haven't we already created a variable for this? Yes, and we can directly use it. Control C, Control V, close the brackets. However, once we open the file, we need to start interacting with the worksheets and the data ranges. So the best way to open a workbook is to assign an object variable to it just as we open it. That makes it easy to interact with the workbook once it's open. So we will dim an object variable called WP and data type workbook. And we will set this variable to equal to the workbook that we have just opened up. Let's test this, run. Great, our files opened up again. Step three, select the data range. I will let you in on a little secret. We don't need to select a range of data in order to copy it. We can just copy it directly. So we actually don't need this step. To copy the data, first let's declare a range object to hold the range that we are about to copy. So we declared an object variable as a range object. Now let's hop over to Excel for a bit. If you want to select this entire data just using keyboards, what would you do? We can select any cell within this data set and use the shortcut Control A. This will select the range of data that we want to copy over. We can do the exact same thing in VBA. The code that we will use to achieve this is called current region and it's a property of the range object. Let's assign this current region to our range variable. How do we assign a range variable? It is an object variable, so use the word set. And let's use the object hierarchy. So we are in our source workbook, which is WP. So here we are referring to range A1, which is this cell. And now we can select the current region, which is dot current region. Next, we'll choose the copy method of our range object variable dot copy press space. This method is asking us what destination we want to paste this data into. So paste it into data sheet and range A1. Let's save and run this. Let's go to our monthly analysis file and we can see that our data is pasted in. Awesome. And basically we don't need this individual steps. Maybe select our file, select A1 and control V because we've done all of it within the step for itself. Now let's auto fit the columns. Auto fit is a method of the columns object. And that's all the code for that. And for the very final step, we need to close the source file, which is still open. We can use the close method of the workbook object. But in Excel, if you try to close a file, Excel may ask you whether you want to save changes. Let's tell Excel that through our code. So press space. One of the optional parameters for the close method is save changes. Let's set it to false. Let's run this macro now. Great. Our data has pasted over and we can't see the August file open. So awesome, it must have closed. Everything seems to be working. And as a final confirmation, let's display a message that alerts the user that this procedure has run. So it's a simple message box saying import complete. And for the very last part, let's create a button in Excel that will trigger the macro. Come over to our console worksheet, search for the developer tab in our ribbon up here. If you can't see it and I can't see mine, Come to Files, Options, Customize Ribbon, and in this right window, tick Developer, click OK. And your Developer tab would have opened. Click on it, go to Insert, Form Controls, and click on the button icon. Come down to our worksheet area. You can see that our cursor has now turned into a plus sign. Click down, drag it down, drag it to the right, create a rectangle, release. We need to select which macro we want to link to this button. We want to link our import data macro, click OK. On the button, right click, edit text, delete this off. We will change it to run and click outside. 
And that's it. Let's hit this button. We get a confirmation message, click OK, and the procedure is complete. And that's it. The macro is all done. Congratulations, you have built your very first real world macro. And there was some very heavy stuff in there. We've covered a lot of ground. If this is your first introduction to VBA, I hope you've enjoyed this course and are intrigued about what else is possible using VBA. And the answer to that is almost anything is possible. And if you're ready to challenge yourself further, I will highly recommend my practical beginners course, which is available on YouTube. And that was the video. Thanks and see you in the next one.